Unlike France, Germany, Britain, and Belgium, Russia was one of those nations in the Western world that was quite unpopular during the period of the scramble for Africa. The Russians were interested in setting up trading colonies and spreading Christianity in Africa. But the attempt to do so was a half-hearted one. To understand why Russia didn't partake in the scramble for Africa, we must first go through the circumstances that defined Russia in the 19th century. Russia, which was also known as the Russian Empire at the time, was an enormous and vast nation. It cuts across Eastern Europe and Asia, and it was the largest land empire in the world. The vastness of the Russian Empire was staggering, as it covered over 17 million square kilometers. Its European parts stretched from the borders of modern-day Poland to the Pacific coast, while its Asian territories extended even further east. Russia in the 19th century was one of those nations that did not partake in the scramble for Africa. One of the primary reasons for Russia's absence in Africa was geographic. The African continent lies far to the south and is separated by thousands of miles of challenging terrain, including vast deserts and dense jungles. This made it logistically complex and expensive for Russia to launch colonial expeditions to Africa. An interest in Africa would have been very problematic for Russia. Moreover, Russia faced an obstacle from the Ottoman Empire, which controlled key territories separating Russia from Africa. These geopolitical considerations discouraged Russia from pursuing African colonization. Also, throughout the 19th century, Russia was deeply engaged in European power politics. The Great Game, a strategic rivalry with the British Empire over Central Asia, commanded much of Russia's attention. This competition for influence in Central Asia diverted resources and strategic focus away from Africa. Furthermore, Russia was more concerned with conflicts with other European powers, such as France and Germany. These rivalries took precedence over African ambitions, Russia was more interested in securing dominance on the European continent. Another crucial factor was Russia's limited naval power compared to major colonial powers like Britain and France. Effective overseas colonization required a strong navy to support expeditions, establish trade routes, and protect colonies. Russia's naval capabilities fell short in this regard. Without a formidable navy, Russia lacked the means to secure and maintain colonies in distant lands, making African colonization almost impossible. Since Russia's strategic focus was primarily on Asia, the Russian Empire was keen on expanding its influence and territories in Asia, particularly Siberia and the Russian Far East. One of the most significant projects of this era was the construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway, connecting Moscow to the Pacific Ocean. This immense undertaking was aimed at strengthening Russia's hold over its vast Asian territories and bolstering trade with the Far East. With such ambitious plans in Asia, Africa became a secondary consideration. Internally, Russia faced considerable economic and political challenges. The nation was still recovering from the aftermath of the Crimean War in the mid-19th century, which had strained its resources and exposed weaknesses in its military and industrial capabilities. Simultaneously, domestic political issues, including discontent among various ethnic and social groups, demanded attention. Investing heavily in African colonization would have done nothing but increase these internal problems. As the scramble for Africa unfolded, numerous parts of the continent were already claimed by other colonial powers. Russia's latecomer status would have made it challenging to secure valuable territories, further discouraging any expansion into Africa. Russia's decision not to scramble for Africa can equally be seen as a result of a complex interplay of geographic, political, economic, and military factors. While Russia was undoubtedly a significant player on the global stage during the 19th century, its priorities and challenges at home and in neighboring regions shaped its historical choices. Russia has always been interested in land for more defensive purposes to defend Russia than for economic purposes, like to economically take advantage of colonies. This defensive mindset can be traced all the way back to the time of troubles in the 1600s, a period of chaos following the end of the Rurik dynasty and subsequent invasions from Poland and Lithuania. 
Ever since the Romanovs took over in Russia, they've always been more concerned with securing their own. They've always cared less about economic development and more about surviving to live another day. However, as Russia was said to not have fully participated in the scramble for Africa, Russia did try to colonize Africa, but unfortunately, it failed. In 1885, Nikolai Ashnov, an adventurer who was known for his ability to convince imperial decision-makers, brought Africa to the attention of Russian imperial officials. He proposed that Russia should get a foothold in Africa by conquering Sudan and Ethiopia along with their Red Sea coasts. He indicated that he had enough volunteers willing to create a colony for the crown, and all he needed was approval from St. Petersburg. Since it was a private venture, various statesmen saw the move as an easy way to have a colony in Africa without sending an army. In March 1888, a Russian warship with Eshnov and several of his companions landed off the coast of Tajura, located today within the borders of Djibouti. Lieutenant A.K. Ivanovsky, a Navy representative, negotiated a protectorate status for the territory with a local sultan, while Eshnov's task was to stay and lay the foundation of a future settlement. While Russian missionaries were getting set to go to Africa in the guise of a religious mission, officially led by Archimandrite Paisii, news reached the government that the settlement did not exist. Ashinov's men, who were supposed to have established the settlement, turned out to be liars. In order to avoid international embarrassment, St. Petersburg withdrew its support for the settlers' mission but still allowed it to proceed as another private venture, hoping the second time Ashinov would be successful. Unfortunately, contrary to the assurances that a local chief had given to the Russian newcomers, the entire coast had already been claimed by France. In February 1889, after a few attempts to force the Russians to surrender failed, French gunboats attacked and killed several settlers. Survivors were picked up by Russian steamships and taken back home. To avoid a diplomatic scandal, the Russian authorities denied any involvement in the colonization of Tajura. As we conclude our exploration into why Russia didn't scramble for Africa, we gain a deeper understanding of the different factors that influenced this historical decision. Russia's vastness, geographic constraints, European rivalries, limited naval power, and focus on Asia all played pivotal roles in shaping its path during the era of colonial expansion. If you found this video insightful, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more in-depth explorations of intriguing historical topics. If you have any questions or if there's another historical subject you'd like us to look into, please let us know in the comment section.